All right. So another major case going on right now is Gilgo. Okay. We all know about it. Well, the attorney for Shannon Gilbert's family has had a press conference with the police commissioner. Okay. They came out and said they have four new witnesses to some of Rex Hewerman's dirty deeds, okay? The implications of this, if they can get more proof, are crazy. Yeah. It implies that his wife knew. Okay. Or had an idea. Okay. So, these, we have two affidavits here. Two of the witnesses did not want to sign an affidavit and write up an affidavit. Um, so, I'm not going to talk about those right now. Um, I think we should definitely, like, watch the press conference um, on stream or something, because it's really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, but... These two are directly linked to two of the women, which is Shannon Gilbert and Karen Vergata. Now, Karen Vergata was a Jane Doe, okay? She was uh, the Fire Island Jane Doe um, that was just recently released that she was identified in 2022, but they just told us this year. Um, and Shannon Gilbert hasn't even been de declared a homicide. Hmm. It's still an accidental death, technically. Now, is this new evidence going to make them turn it into a homicide investigation and maybe get him charged with more? Yeah, maybe. So, I wanted to kind of go over what happened to the victims real quick and then talk about the witness accounts of what happened to them. Yeah. According yeah. to these women, or at least their associations with Rex Hewerman. So, uh, it, Shannon Gilbert went missing May 1st, 2010. Uh, she was getting a ride to Oak Beach around like 2 a.m. Um, and her ride was Michael Pack. She was, you know, a prostitute. She was going to meet a John whose name was Joseph Brewer. Um, so around 3 a.m., like they get there about 2 a.m., um, she gets dropped off at the house and her ride, you know, Pack sits in his car. Shannon starts making calls to Pack around 3 a.m. and from 3 a.m. to 4.45 are a few calls, okay? Um, then 4.45, she begins to get agitated in some kind of way. And then Brewer says to Pack on the phone, get her out of my house. Like, she's freaking out. Um, Pack comes in, and then Shannon says, you guys are trying to kill me. And then she hides behind a couch and calls 911, a call that lasts 23 minutes from 4.51 to 5.14 o'clock in the morning. It was reported her call was transferred to the New York, New York State Police instead of Suffolk, Suffolk, Suffolk County. Yeah. Uh, the recording was released to her family in May 2020, but I believe it, it was to the attorney, but I believe we didn't hear it until like a year after that or something like that. But... Pack gets out of his car, goes in the house, you know, and Shannon's falling down, or Brewer's house, and falls down, wait, 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 Shannon bursts from the house, okay, because he went back to the car after that. Then, he's back in his vehicle and sees her running out of the house, out of the front door, falls down the stairs, and then starts running to neighbor's house, knocking on the door while on the phone with 911, um... And, and freaking out, asking yeah. for help, saying people are after her. And he doesn't know what's going on. He thinks she's, like, losing her mind. Sure. Um, so the neighbors call the police, okay? There's a couple phone calls to 911. Uh, the cops don't show up for a very long time. Then the 911 call ends and her screaming. And and if you when you listen to this 911 call, she's like, no, no, like... 
No. Like, she's talking to somebody, and it's a man. You can hear his voice, and he has a very distinct Long Island accent, is what I noticed. Um, and, and then hmm. she's just screaming. It's so horrific, honestly. Cause State police? Yeah, there's somebody after me. I'm sorry? There's somebody after me. Where are you? There's somebody after me. Okay, where are you? There's somebody after me. Where are you, ma'am? I don't know. You're driving right now? No, I'm inside a house. I'm sorry? I'm inside a house. What house? I don't know. Can you trace where I am? I'm sorry? Can you trace where I am? No, I can't. What's your callback number you're calling from? Huh? What phone number are you calling from? Somebody's after me. Please. Are you in Suffolk County or Nassau County? Um, I'm in Long Island. Where on Long Island are you? Okay, you no. What are you going to do? What are you going to do to me? You're freaking me out. I'm in the middle of nowhere. Let's go back to Long Island. We're in Long Island. We're out near the water. Please, stop. Please, Mike. No. That had to have been her last moments of life, um, or at least close to it. So she isn't found for a year. They finally find her in December uh, 2011, Gilgo Beach. She doesn't have pants on, okay? Which I find interesting that they say she fell onto the, the beach in, in that brush and somehow loses her pants in the fall, all of her pants just come off, not ripped to shreds or anything, just gone. Hmm. And when they do an autopsy, they find that the there's a little bone, okay, that is distinct when somebody is strangled. Yeah, I that forget breaks. what that's called, but I know what you're I'm talking I'm forgetting about. what it's called right now, too, unfortunately. Yeah. But... It, and it's it doesn't distinct. take much pressure, but it it's almost always breaks when... Almost always, yeah. and it's high up in the neck, and it's not... It, it's highly unlikely that would break from anything else other than being strangled. Yeah. That was present in all of the victims, okay? Okay. So she Jeez. had that, too. She, hers was broken, too. Um, but they said it was an accidental death and have stuck by that, Um all of this time. So, now, we have now a witness account, which I feel like the one to Karen Vergata is way more hard-hitting. Um, but this one is interesting, too, about Shannon. We have a witness come forth, who forth, come forth that says she was a banker during the day, and at night she was a taxi driver, um, to help support her family. It was like a single parent home. So she goes out. It says that her, her employer's dispatcher directs her to drive to a little road off ocean Avenue in Ronk, Kona, mm -hmm. Ronka, something like that. Ronka Kona to pick up a customer. Um, it was a bar not far off exit 59 on the Longway Express, um, and, and I was to have picked up a person named Matt. When she arrived at the bar, she saw a really large man wearing an army-like fatigue jacket crouching down on a very small street next to the bar where I pulled up. He rose so that I observed his immense size. Hmm. He approached the cab and appeared to be wearing jeans and a white t-shirt. His hair was more or less light colored, but not blonde. He was a white man. I had been told by dispatcher the place of destination for this customer, but I no longer can recall the location. This large man approached a taxi to get in. His words to me seemed arrogant. So he came okay. off arrogant, which it is to be said, Rex Herman is large. And yeah. he also uses his size to intimidate he, yeah. and was arrogant. Yep. He entered into the rear of the taxi, sat in the rear seat, no 
are on the edge of the sea in the middle. Um, he said they're going for a long ride in the woods. And she and indicated they had to pick up a girl who was in the house across the street from the bar. Uh, my taxi was stopped very close to the house on a very narrow side street. I could see a white girl in the window in that house. I believe the window in the house is where I saw the girl was, the, the window was open, basically. Okay. Um, I told him I couldn't take him on that trip that he indicated, uh, and she had to clear it with the dispatcher. He argued. Um, he said, are you being a smart butt? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, as we argued, he said he wanted to kill me. If I would just give him a reason to do so, I could hear my dispatcher yelling words to the effect, you got a gun on my driver, I see you. I got a call in to someone. I said words to the effect, I don't even know you. The large man had sort of identification chain hanging on him, but I could not see the full ID. I asked him if he was a cop. He said he was a cop. When I asked him where he was a cop, he replied, Brooklyn. Now, the other statement, and I don't know who this guy is in the other statement, was a cop from Brooklyn, which I, I, I don't know if this is Rex Heerman or that other guy, but the other guy is super sus to me, too. Yeah. That the other affidavit mentions here in a little bit, so I want you to remember that. He's a cop from Brooklyn. Okay. I told the large man to just get out of my car and I would not press charges. Um... Then a man who I subsequently took to the girl's boyfriend as took to be the girl's boyfriend, okay? Which Shannon, Gil, or Shannon Gilbert had a guy riding her around, okay, to John's. Yeah. So she, this guy she takes as the girl's boyfriend told me later on the dispatcher, or, or wait, as told to me later on by the dispatcher pulled into the house's driveway. I turned off the car. I said I was not moving. So, um, I, I told him he could have the keys, he could have money, just, you know, would he speak to his mother that way? Basically, like, and he said his mother was dead. So, the, dis the dispatcher said to him to just walk away, he stepped out of the car, he leaned in the front passenger window, the, the dispatcher told me the large man asked the boy friend and girl for a ride, to which one of them replied to the words of the effect, no, the cops are on the way. The large man went into nearby wooded area and shot off his gun two times, according to the dispatcher. I had already started the car and I had already driven down the street when the large man did whatever the dispatcher told me that he did. Uh, which is shooting the gun, I assume. So then a police officer pulls up. A Suffolk, Suff, oh my gosh, I don't know why I can't say that. Suffolk County police officer pulls up without sirens uh, and no headlights. So he, he came in in the dark. Um, he had dark hair and appeared to be in his 30s. Uh, he, she told him what happened and that the guy pulled a gun. He said he was responding to a call um, and said a girl had called in that call. Okay. Okay. I, so weird. Is this the night that Shannon Gilbert went missing? I don't know. I said to him the words to the effect that he's one of yours. He's a he's had a bad night. He pulled a gun. The officer's vehicle then creeped down the street past my car. Um, I drove away to other calls. I told my family members about this. Um, and she just tells all the people she saw. Then she sees on TV Rex Hewerman. He was the large man I encountered in the incident above, and he was the large man I saw in the incident I described below. I was afraid of him. I, kn I now know him to be known as Rex Hureman. So there's another incident, okay? Okay. Another one where she goes to pick up a passenger at Sayville Motor Lodge on Sunrise Highway. Mm -hmm. Um. So I was told by the dispatcher that the prospective passenger had asked for a female driver and she had locked herself in a bathroom at a motel. Uh, I drove in behind the motel and apparently she was supposed to flash her lights or something, but I saw a dark, apparently greenish gray SUV on the side street near 
to the motel. I drove in the parking lot. I looked for the correct room number. When I located it, I blew my car's horn and flashed my lights at the room. I did these things on and off for seven to eight minutes. No one came out. Then a very large man came out. Remember, she said she believes both of these situations are involving Rex Huberman. Yeah. He appeared to have a bit of a belly. He ran to the side street. He tried to block his face with his arms. Then a girl ran out. She was petite. She was crying and shaking. Entered my taxi in the right seat. She said that we had to get away from there. I noticed one of her eyes had something defective about it, that it appeared to droop. Her hair was pulled back neatly like a ballerina would have done. She wore jeans and a shirt. She was not dressed proactively. She said that she was glad that she had gotten me as a driver. Um, She said she met the man on Craigslist. He befriended her, said that he would take care of her family, her mom, her sisters. Um, He gave her a thick white envelope and said it was like a grand or something like that. And then when she went to look in it, it was just stuffed with paper. So, oh my gosh. Right. Jeez. It was just cut up paper. She said that she he shook her and he was aggravated after she showed it to him and was like, "What is this?" Uh she said that he she said that he she said that what? For you you just got done with 10, right? Yeah, she he was ag- right. he shook her. And was so aggravated. I'll, I'll cut this part in. She, she said that he shook her and that that he was aggravated. She said that he got aggressive, so she ran into the bathroom and locked herself in there. She said he banged on the door. The girl never told me her name. I believe the incident took place when it was still a little warm outside. The girl wore a little light jacket, a dark color. She had a pocketbook, which was not large. She said that they were always calling her to come out to Long Island. She said that she did not want to come out to Long Island. She told me about her family, including her sisters and her mother. She said that as to her mother, I would not be able to understand her situation with her mother. Much of the conversation took place at the Sayville Motor Lodge or at the Ronkonkoma train station. She had a long wait in order to take the 2 a.m. train to New York City. She had a distinctive voice. She was articulate. She paid for the ride and tipped me five dollars. She then sat with another taxi driver in his car waiting for the train because I had to pick up other customers. I saw her on TV where she was identified as Shannon Gilbert. I am certain that the girl was Shannon Gilbert. I recognize her unusual eye droop and her voice. Her story, she told me, of her family matched the family of Shannon Gilbert. Rex Hewerman appeared to me to be a very big man I saw coming from the motel room I mentioned in my affidavit. I recognize Shannon Gilbert. I told my dispatcher of this incident. I also told the female manager at the Sayville Motor Lodge of the incident. The manager appeared to be a native of India. I told other taxi drivers of this incident. The dispatcher had the telephone number of the large man. I called the police tip line when Rex Hewerman was arrested. I spoke with the young woman and told her the basic facts, which I knew. I spoke twice with the tip line that day, and I never received a return call. And you wonder why they're going through a private attorney instead of coming to the police. Yeah. Come on now. Um, so, yeah. I why. But anyway, this the, I do remember from the press conference that she believed, with the eye defect, she believed this to be Shannon Gilbert. Okay. That, that she had confided in her um, and that he got really aggravated at some point. She locks herself in the bathroom and that she had serviced this man several times, apparently. Huh. But... I, I'm I'm curious what order these things came in. So we also have a statement from the Suffolk Suffolk County District Attorney, um, basically saying they had no idea what was going to be released in this press conference, and the the attorney said that they had been working with the team, you know, the investigation, the yeah. investigative team. Um, 
and that they had turned all of this over to them. So I'm a bit confused how they didn't know unless, I mean, that doesn't really make sense to me. Um, they said that they're going to continue investigating, obviously. Um, they didn't know what was going to be pro pro like reported, but they're going to continue investigating through the grand jury process uh, and not through press conferences. <laughs> No private attorneys are or ever have been members or agents of the task force, which is not what was claimed. He never claimed that he was a member of the task force. He just no. said he's been working with the commissioner yeah. and giving him evidence. And that some of these people are scared to go to the police to talk. They would rather talk to him because they're escorts. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. I... I Accordingly, private attorneys are not part of the task force and potential witnesses should not be reaching out to private attorney with an interest in the outcome of the case. I don't I don't agree with that necessarily. If they don't feel safe reaching out to you, there's a reason for it. But I mean, you're still getting the evidence. You still have sworn yeah. affidavits in your hands. Ab yeah, absolutely. Like if that's a if that is a bridge to build, like if that's a bridge to you and getting to talk to those witnesses yourself, then what's the problem with it? One thing I didn't know is that Shannon Gilbert's mother was murdered by one of Shannon's sisters. Really? Yeah, she her sister like lost her mind and is in a mental asylum now and murdered her mom. Whoa. So really the only people that are left fighting for Shannon with the attorney is like a, a, another sister. Jeez. I think maybe two. I can't remember. I mean, um, I would hope that the FBI... Um, I mean, yeah, they are. They are. The, the FBI is the only reason this ended up happening, I think. Yeah. And the change Agreed. of police, you know, that... Yeah. That was a big deal. The change of the police management and yeah. uh, I think the DA of the area. Like, there's been quite a few changes from what was to what is now. Yeah. Yeah. But this is the bombshell coming up, okay? So, that was Shannon Gilbert. Now we're going to talk about Karen Vergata. So, like I said, she was the Fire Island Jane Doe that they identified in uh, 2022 and we just found out this year. Now... She was a 34-year-old woman believed to have lived in um, on 40, West 45th Street in Manhattan uh, working as an escort. So she calls her father, Dominic Vergata, on his birthday, February 14th, 1996. Six and at the time he was in he was in prison, okay. And she would call him from time to time, but this is the last time he hears from his daughter. Um, mm. He never hears from her again. So that is considered the day she went missing. There was never a missing person report uh, ever, like until yeah. he got out of prison and then he tried to track her down, um, hired a private investigator and to she no avail, gone. to no avail. Um, so the dad ended up dying in December 22nd. You know, well, then, like, the body obviously was found. And then December yeah. 22nd, he passes away. And, um, you know, then la last year she was identified. Mm -hmm. So, it was says 20, okay. Wow, okay. Never mind. Okay. So, now, this person uh, claimed she was a swinger, Okay. And this is believed to be, this was Valentine's Day, 1996, exactly, mm. um, where this woman went to a swingers club that is very well known, I believe it's called Trapeze, um, with a partner that she usually did these things with on holidays. Sure. So they went to this swingers club, and it, it's known to have a ton of people in it. Uh, they describe it a little bit. I don't think I need to go into that. But they see an ad posted on a wall. So people okay. post ads on walls. Yep. They found this one that was in Massapequa Park, New York. And that ends up being the human's home. So she goes out there with this police officer that is her partner. And he was from Brooklyn. She calls him Mr. Ray 
or R.W. Hmm. She was in a partnership Whoa. with him at the time. Um, so, yeah, Prospect Park in Brooklyn is... He became a detective. He was handsome. He lo- She loved him. So... They travel. They go to travel out to the Humerman home, and they pick up a girl who apparently seemed homeless and hungry at the time. So they take her out there. She says that, you know, you should uh, ask them if you can take a shower and have some food when we get there. Um, and they go in, okay? Uh, they said they walked around the side. It was night, uh, it was dark, and Karen went downstairs. I, she says she stayed upstairs with Asa, Hewerman's wife, the whole time and never went downstairs. She believes her partner, okay, the cop, Mr. Ray, was bisexual, and he kept disappearing. Um, she thought he was elsewhere in the house having relations with Rex Hewerman. Yeah. So... She said she also believes she had relations with him, too. Okay. She, again, never went downstairs. So, Asa, Asa, confides in her a little bit and starts talking to her because she's sitting upstairs with her and says that Rex brought her from her country. We know that Asa's from Iceland. She says, Rex brought me from my country and I owe everything to him. And that she was lucky that, yeah, and that everything she had, he has given to her. She said that she was lucky he was rich. She said she was also afraid of Rex. I don't know if she was truthful. And she says again, she didn't go downstairs. So I went towards the back of the house asking RW, where are you? So she's calling out for him from him. He comes out of the back, what seemed like a room. And she sees a Christmas tree on the main floor, but it was long past Christmas. This is Valentine's Day, and that stuck in her mind. She was like, what's that about, you know? Um, So that's, she said that's how she remembers that it was Valentine's Day, because she thought, that's weird, Christmas tree up in Valentine's Day? Yeah. That's how she can place it in her mind. Sure. Um, And that's when they would swing, was on holidays. She saw two large seashells on a shelf in the house, recalling that they looked like they were from the country she grew up in. Um, So... She asked, like, do you, she asked, do you have any friends from my country to Asa? She doesn't remember what she replied um, and asked her if they could have relations. She said no. Um, And then she recalls Rex went outside in the back and started a fire in a huge, in a big barrel. Okay. In his backyard. So then her partner, Mr. Ray, said he wants to leave. I went with him to the car. We left from the back door. Mr. Ray complained that he lost his belt. He went back to the house to retrieve it. I saw the face of a woman, I believe to be Karen, up against a window at the house. She looked scared. I had a sense that she was calling for help. I told R.W. of this, Mr. Ray. The woman, I believe to be Karen, suddenly ran outside naked and ran about by the garage. Mr. Ray had gone to the back of the house to look for his belt, but he was back in the car. But then he was back in the car. Mr. Ray told me not to worry about her, that she was okay. They were only playing a game. We left without her. I felt uneasy that we left without the woman. I saw Rex on TV recently and a picture of Karen Vergata. I recognize her as the woman who Mr. Ray and I brought to the Hewerman home. I was shocked and deeply sorrowful for having left her behind at the Hewerman home. Gosh. I told John Ray of these things because I need needed to speak with him so that Karen would not be left behind again. That dude. Yeah. Police involvement. Police involvement. A police officer from Brooklyn. Did Rex know to say that because he had a buddy who was a police officer from Brooklyn and had his yeah. ID? Did he take his ID? And his and, ID badge? Yeah, and remember too that we speculated when that first evidence came out that he there were very specific search 
very specific searches, ser- searches that you would only know to look for on his computer. What cop is going to be like, oh, don't worry, they're only playing a game when she's pressed against a window, freaked out, and then runs outside naked trying to run away. And you're going to be like, oh, don't worry, they're just playing a game. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like there's... How did other people not see that, though, too? But know? also, that implies his wife knew. Yeah, that does. That does. That it happened in the home at some point. Yeah. Unless he, unless she just didn't ask questions, it was like, don't ask, don't tell. But that, that still implies some knowledge. Something. Yeah. Something. Yeah, absolutely. This, this one specifically, I mean, the one with Shannon is, is shocking too, but this one is the most shocking in my opinion. We've said from the beginning that it's impossible for him to end those four people and then just stop. Yeah, there's no, no way. No way. No way. And this implies that he's also bisexual. Yeah. Meaning the person, the man that was found that was cross-dressed or maybe was transgender, we don't know. Um, that yeah. would make sense. Yeah, yeah. It could be a connection there. I mean, I think that is a huge deal. I think that is super wild. It and absolutely is it a is huge like deal. It is like case after case after case right now is just dropping insane information. Yeah, you know, they've also had 12 women from the prison that he's being held in. Oh, apparently they've interviewed 141 escorts or or sex workers so far. And so far we've had 12 women that have claimed to have have had interactions with Rex Hewerman. So so they also they literally have people coming from the jail like that he's in right now, saying that they had interactions with him and tons of other people too. Like, ever, apparently ever since he was arrested, tons of people have been coming in saying, I know him and I, I was an escort and experienced this with him. And lived to tell the tale. Crazy. They are lucky. Yeah. I wonder how many weren't lucky. Considering yep. how many people are already or how involved many, in how this, how many aren't real too? That that's True. what my only. True. That's one thing I consider too, because we saw what's her face right here who uh, came forward first and got a lot of attention. You know, there are people out there in the world um, that also seek attention that didn't have real yeah. experiences. I'm not pointing at any one of them specifically. It just makes me wonder: Are those people mixed in there too? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But it's it's crazy how many are coming forward. It is crazy. I just wonder how many more there are out there, especially... Unsolved yeah. or unfound or... I know. And, and this Karen Vergata one, okay, this... Didn't they say the, the Gilgo Four, that it, there was proof for each one of them his wife was out of town? Mm-hmm. Now, what about all the rest? Yeah, I know. What about all the rest? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, but some good questions there. Yeah, I want to know what you guys think about this. I want to know if you think that his wife knew, if you think these witness statements are honest, which I am inclined to believe that these specific ones, these two sworn affidavits are honest. Um, I don't think that these women have anything to gain. They're older women at this point. And uh, they they don't want their names necessarily put out there. Their names are redacted. Yeah. Um, they don't want any notoriety from this. They just wanted the truth out there because they felt bad that they saw this and experienced this and didn't realize. They had no idea. You know, it's in New York. All kinds of crazy stuff happens all the time, especially if you're a taxi driver or yep. a swinger. I agree. You're living a life where you're going to encounter strange things. Like, I agree. Yeah. So, man... Yep. Wild. Yep. But yeah, that's a wrap for Gilgo for now. I'm going to be keeping my eye on this. Yep. This is wild stuff. Yep. And yep. we'll definitely have to live stream watching some of that and digging into it a bit more. Absolutely.